Hello, fellow virtual pinballers. I am Major Frenchy. Welcome to my workshop, guys. Today, I'm going to do something special, something that newbies, people getting started in the world of virtual pinball, <laughs> virtual pinball, wants to get on their cab. The only thing that they don't want is to get into the complexity of DOF and connecting everything to make it work. What am I going to do today? I'm going to wire a button directly onto a solenoid that every time you actually hit the flipper switches, it will trigger the solenoids without having DOF. Sounds interesting? Stay tuned. Installing force feedback on a virtual pinball cabinet adds a lot to the feel of playing and being immersive. If you saw my videos in the last couple of years, I installed pretty much all the toys available out there on a pinball cabinet, and I basically explained to everyone how it was done. Some people feel very intimidated by this. I, I get that. With today's install, even a newbie will be able to add significant changes to the force feedback on a virtual pinball cabinet. We're going to use a board from Cleveland Software and uh, we're going to wire it to a 12 volt power supply in the cabinet and just connect this to the buttons of the flippers. And every time we're gonna hit the flipper, it will trigger the solenoid. The, the beauty of this is that it will actually work with systems that are not even DOF native, which means if you play uh, FX3, if you play Zakaria tables, if you play standalone program, for example, on the Legends pinball that I've started this project with, it basically will add the functionality inside the Legends Pinball at, by flipping the buttons and triggering the solenoids. The product I'm going to use today uh, was actually designed by Philip at Cleveland Software. And let me just talk a little bit about what he does. That can be found at clevelandsoftwaredesign.com. Basically builds hardware for us people that likes virtual pinball. Kung's R Us uh, is a new channel that I discovered recently. Uh, he's good. He's actually got an interview with Philip, people that does good stuff for the community. It's worth mentioning, absolutely. Right. On the site, he's got the solenoid flipper button control board, uh, which retails for about for 55 bucks. He shows you basically the diagram, how it will connect to your devices. The one that we're gonna use today connects exactly the same, even though the board looks different. Here's the board. The two pins here for the power supply. It's for the solenoids. On the other side, it is for the buttons. You're going to connect the two pins of the buttons on this terminal here. This one, the input goes to the controller board. It can be a zero delay board, or it can be uh, anything that basically controls the buttons. 12 volt solenoid, they sound real good. The top screw here is going to be the positive, the uh, ground, which is the bottom flat thing here. Now, this new version has a couple of new features, and it has the uh, life extender built in. And I will get into why it's important in a few seconds. Also, uh, you, you can see there's a jumper, and uh, the jumper, it's a, a cool feature that Philip adds. Um, it basically allows you to increase how much time the solenoid needs. By default, it's at 25 milliseconds, which is pretty fast, and then you can move from pin to pin, basically up to 200 milliseconds. So if you're having issues, if triggering or not, you can move that little red jumper. Why is this important to have this built in if you're gonna have your solenoid triggering? Because these take a lot of current. If you just use this without the life extender, without this, 12 volt, you would need 3.5 amp at about 30 watts. Like you hold a button, for, let's say for a flipper, you would burn this in no time. And that's why we see so many of these burning in cabs because they are not protected really and they're not designed to fire constantly. Cool. Is the small power supply I'm going to use. Look how tiny that thing is. It's 12 volts, 2 amps, 25 watts. And uh, if you want to run basically your eight solenoids in your cab, you would need three, four amps uh, at 12 volts, right? 
uh, a 50 watt power supply would be sufficient to fire all your solenoids. Once you actually have the life extender, it will only use one watt for your solenoid, which is why he calls it the life extender. So the source is a 12 volt power supply and the positive and negative of the power supply go here. Now on the other side, you got the solenoid 12 volt positive and negative goes to the positive terminal of your solenoid and the negative terminal of the solenoid. And here for the button, you send a wire to the signal and to the ground and it will work. Now that you've seen it working, I know you can do it. It's not hard. Mark my words, I'm going to spend extra amount of time planning the layout and the wiring of this cabinet. It's not going to be messy. It's going to be clean. And I'm going to take time and install one component at a time and making sure that the cable management in this cabinet is going to be top priority. <laughs> So this is just a test before I put everything together. Oh my God, this sounds amazing, guys. I got the uh, cable management tracks. So I ran the power 12 volt and the actual ground from this power supply here, which is gonna be mounted here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. Amazing! Actually, I'm going to do some wire cleaning. Alright, I'm done uh, hiding all the wires. I told you guys I was going to go crazy about uh, 
cable management. So I even actually removed, they had, uh, App Games actually had the uh, wires here uh, with the USB. I unscrewed this and I basically running the wire. So just if you're wondering, basically you can fish the wires across without actually seeing the wires, which will be very neat because we're gonna jam pack this thing, guys. And we're finally done. This mod took about, I would say, two and a half hours. And uh, I had to actually run the 12 volt power supply, which adds a little bit of time. But installing the boards are fairly simple. So now, when I press this, so we're going to do some gameplay. Just That's it folks, I hope you actually enjoyed this tutorial. That's a fairly easy mod for this Legends Pinball. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun and it makes quite a bit of difference. For about a hundred bucks, it, it's a no-brainer. So guys, thank you very much for being with me. Uh, follow us on uh, Virtual Pinball Chat on the Discord channel. Uh, we get over 7,000 members. We actually answer questions uh, for Pin Up Popper, for Legends Pinball. We have our dedicated channel in here. So come and join us. Thank you very much.